Hello everyone, welcome to 27. I've been wanting to talk about classic car prices for a while and why I think that they are going to plummet. And there's a very, very simple reason. It's to do with supply. Before we talk about that though, let me just talk to you about what's happened in the past. Between 2005 and 2014, car, classic car prices went up by 399%. That is absolutely mind boggling. Now, it's true that in 2016, we've seen a small drop, but most people have said that the market is roughly going to hold steady. It's not going to completely implode. Um, the reason why classic car prices have been so buoyant in the last few years is, can be split into four different sections. The first of all is low interest rates. In most of the Western world, there hasn't been any point investing your money in bank accounts or anything like that because you would get nothing back. Second thing, especially here in the UK, I don't know if it applies in the rest of the world, is that on selling classic cars, there is no capital gains tax. So say you buy a load of shares and you make £10,000. You have to then pay, in the UK probably, depending on what you earn, a 40% tax on that. If you buy a car, and in two or three years it goes up by the same amount, you don't have to pay any tax. It's not taxable. So that was quite alluring. Then the last thing is that these classic cars are solid assets of limited quantity. Very important here. So in an age where you have things like cryptocurrencies, where you literally pull value out of nowhere into nothing, uh, and where, for example, in the gold market, if you're trading gold and stocks and shares, there are those people who I think with, you know, quite rightly say that the amount of gold being traded in the world doesn't equal the amount of gold that is there. So just to, to try and make you understand, these are solid assets. You can get the car, you can see it, you can own it, and at the same time you can make money on it. And it's this, the last point about limited availability is the one that I think is is going to have the biggest impact on classic car prices. Now, to illustrate it, I'm going to talk about one of the gold standard cars in terms of classic cars for investment, and that is the 2.7 Porsche RS. Now, in the early 70s when they were produced, there was a 1,090 produced and then another 55 of the 3 litres. The important thing is how this changes over time. So, in, in, from the 70s till the early 90s, when the 964 RS was produced, only around 1,140 RS cars were produced. That's in 20 years. Then, in the early 90s, the 964 RS was produced. 2,282 um, 964 RSs were produced. A few years later, about five years later, the 993 RS was produced. Only 1,014 of those were produced. But you see where I'm going with this. Already in 10 years, you've got 3,300 produced. So three times the amount that was produced in the previous 20 years. If you then go to the uh, late 90s and early noughties, then you're looking at from 98 to 04, there was the 996. Now, First of all, the model variants expanded, so there was no longer just an RS, there was a GT3, there was a GT3 RS, there was a GT2, etc. All in all, those models produced were 4,500. Then, from 2005 to 2012, the 997, that expanded to seven different models. So you've got a GT3, GT3 RS, 4.0, etc, etc. 5,300 of those were produced. So altogether, you're looking at almost 11,000 special models produced only in 12, 14 years. Whereas in previous 20 years, when the 2.7 RS was produced, it was 1,100 more or less models. So can you see where I'm going with this? Every single year, more and more classic cars are being produced. There simply can't be a market to sustain that. Populations are increasing, but nowhere near quickly enough for that. Classic cars as well, they don't tend to be scrapped. Once they become desirable, maybe you lose the odd one or two through accidents, but the numbers remain roughly consistent. But every year that number is added to with new classic cars and with new cars that become considered classic cars. When you add on top of that the fact that manufacturers are squeezing out ever more special, special, special models, when you look at the fact that interest rates are predicted to go up, then you can see where I'm coming from. 
these prices cannot hold. There are anomalies to this and people who say, look, it's not true, the classic market is really buoyant. For example, just this in June 2018, the, there was a record for the highest ever selling car. It was a Ferrari 250 GTO, which was sold to collector David McNeil for $70 million. Now that's just incredible. However, the very top of the market is slightly different. First of all, 34 GTOs were produced. Uh, no, sorry, 39 GTOs were produced. So a very, very rare car. Secondly, these kinds of cars really are simply investment standard. They are like paintings. So markets like China and India have started sucking up those kind of cars, but they are investments. There is no culture there. There isn't a past for them to like the more bread and butter type stuff. So I don't anticipate that those markets are gonna suck up the, the, the glut of oversupply. I do think that going forward, the values of most of these cars have to drop. Let me give you an example. I bought this for 10,000 pounds in 2012. <clears throat> it would now, had I done nothing to it, it would now be worth probably around the 40,000 pound mark four times more than it was when I originally got it. 911s in particular have had a real skyrocketed. Now in the last couple of years, values had definitely plateaued. But I think that eventually, there's gonna be so much more choice of what you can buy. The prices will have to go down. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, I'm sure you, you may or may not agree with what I'm saying. Thanks very much for watching. If you liked it, please have a look at some of my other vids. I tend to do stuff on, uh, I tend to do car reviews and everything else rather than these sort of vlog type things. But I hope you enjoyed this and uh, hopefully see you soon.